Hi everyone, I'm Ramunas Bagdonas, head of HR for Telia. These days I uh, happen to work in Lithuania in various industries as well as abroad, Switzerland, Poland. I'm also a BMI graduate, I'm class two and um, yeah, happy to ask a few questions uh, for Amy. I think uh, it's kind of not anymore where the communication happens. Either we meet face to face uh, and have to travel for half day if we want to arrange a meeting. In the digital era, plenty of tools available for us, Skype, Messenger, video conferencing, you name it. I guess that comes different sort of challenges to be addressed. The question stays still the same, how to stay focused, how to make sure your message comes across and you achieve what you want in your communication any good ideas and advices how to integrate these new digital tools to be successful in your communication. Hi everyone, and thanks Ramunas for the questions. Let me jump right in. A little background first. This program was developed well over 20 years ago, and it was designed for engineers working in call centers, very high stress jobs, because they would have people calling in, losing hundreds and thousands of dollars, yen, euros by the minute. And so you can imagine how the customers were pretty high stressed, right? So the engineer had to communicate instantaneously, I can do the job and you're in good hands. And essentially when we're meeting another human being, we're unconsciously asking ourselves those two questions. Can she do the job? Can I rely on her? Will I enjoy working with her? And so that's the quality of competence and confidence and caring and concern. So how to communicate confidence and competence? The top three behaviors are short sentences, downward inflection, pausing. For caring and concern, the top three behaviors are a warm smile. Even over the phone, you can hear the difference in the voice. Using the person's name and something called vocal variation. So let me give you this example. Hi, Mendogas is now a good time to speak. So I have the vocal variation. I have the pause between the first and the second phrase. I use the person's name to show respect. I've got the vocal variation to sound engaged. I, um, I have the, uh, the downward inflection at the end. So what do I mean by the downward inflection? Think of this. My name is Bond, James Bond. The guy is sure of what he's doing and you know someone's gonna die and hopefully you're gonna get saved in the meantime. Amy, I see you work a lot in Lithuania and I, I would assume you've got to know a little bit the, the culture, the way Lithuanian uh, executives are communicating. Uh, any good tips and tricks uh, for Lithuanian crowd, uh, how to be successful if you want to be successful in the global arena? Here's the thing you guys, I'm a little bit biased because frankly, the very first time I walked into the classroom at BMI, which was November of 2012, what struck me immediately was how friendly people were, how approachable were they, they were, easy going, relaxed, and not taking themselves too seriously. And for me, all of these qualities show a high level of emotional intelligence. And human beings are human beings no matter where they are in the world. They want to know those two things. Do you respect them? Can they rely on you? So in order to be successful on the global platform, on the global stage, you want to be using those six behaviors that I talked about earlier. And in addition to that, you want to have what I call a partner mindset, a partner attitude. Well, what that means is you in your best mood, you hanging out with your best buddies, that's how you show up and you want to show up regardless of what's going on. What do I mean by that? If you're hungry, angry, lonely, tired, stressed, no matter what's going on, you act as if you're in a good mood. Now that's going to be tough for some of you where authenticity is really important. I get that. Here's the good news. It's only temporary, meaning maybe you're in a bad mood, except you have to have an important conversation. You act like you're in a good mood and it's only temporary because the other person experiences you in a good mood, that's how they treat you, and then your mood starts to authentically increase. Yay! And the other bonus is by forcing yourself to fake it in that short term, that's a way of reinforcing emotional intelligence and even increasing it. And when we can do that, 
that will make us successful regardless of who we're interacting with, where we are in the world. Now, I'm looking forward to meeting you all in a couple weeks. In the meantime, happy partnering, everyone.